those in the in the greater scheme of this the um more of these systemic barriers that you're asking about one thing that i think is across the board often particularly in therapeutic approaches or protocol driven techniques is that we are so keen about doing things systematically and evidence-based that we have a set of steps that we follow that absolutely are needed and need to be thought about very carefully but i would encourage people to really understand the principles behind those therapies rather than feeling they have to do it in a set order at a set time because human beings are complex and they do not fit into boxes so a formulation driven approach is what really inspired me to do more with trust psychology and trust pain management to be able to think for this particular person this is why they're experiencing the barriers that they are and rather than receive a report that recommends a certain number of sessions or a certain protocol driven approach because that's what the evidence base links in to suggest have we got the flexibility to take those guidance and then adapt it almost session by session to what someone's um, communicating because all resistance to me is a communication of some other need that we're not meeting and we can easily miss individual clients need through just applying a standard um, technique or system without really delving deeper about someone's expectations so i I was talking to our team recently about a kind of upside down triangle whereby the top two corners represent um, therapy process or do I feel safe with this practitioner, the trust and safety formulation, which is, are we working on the same problem? Do we have a joint collaborative understanding of what we're trying to do? And then technique structure at the bottom of the triangle. And my experience has taught me that if you don't address the top two, if you don't have trust in the relationship therapeutically and with the team and a joint understanding, you can forget about the technique because you're just going to get stuck and stuck and stuck. And then having the practitioners trained and skilled enough to be able to know what to do to keep the trust and the safety there, because it's more than just um, speaking to, uh, we, we can throw out these concepts of we've got a good relationship with our clients, but I'd really ask people to say, what does that mean? What do you do together? What are you able to, what level of attunement have you got with where their stuckness is? And the, the negotiation of the goals and the, the, the problem solving where we want to get to needs to be a real negotiation because as practitioners, we can know exactly where we want to go. And we, we see the client as stopping us reaching that potential and the client will be thinking the same. So it's going closer towards problems and being really open to working on those two principles before you go near the technique. And I think, especially when you've got huge organizations, it's easy to teach technique, it's easy to teach protocol. It's much, much harder to have someone reflect on what they're bringing therapeutically to the safety aspect. And of course, when you're talking trauma, if someone has adverse life experiences, which we all have to a certain degree, their trauma and safety will be expressed in the nervous system. They will be unable to do certain things until you help them move past that point. So it's the flexibility, I think, of the application of techniques. Mm -hmm.